All right, guys, so how can we make this PlayStation 1 basically play everything? That is quite simple. Let's stick a pie in it. <laughs> so recently I picked up this Raspberry Pi for kit and also a PlayStation 1. Yeah, I want to build a Raspberry Pi inside a PlayStation 1. I think it's going to be really cool because nowadays we can play a lot of awesome things with it. But how do you need to do it? Let's take a closer look at that. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need is a PlayStation 1 or maybe you can get yourself a kit like I did. But what you need to do is, what you, it's very simple, you need to open it up. I recommend getting yourself a broken PlayStation 1 like the one I'm having here. Because it would be a shame to tear down a good working PlayStation 1. The only thing I need to do is removing a couple of parkers and we're going to lift up the top cover. Okay, so when we remove the parkers, we need to lift up the top cover. And yeah, the other thing that we need to do, we need to do a completely disassemble of this casing. We need to remove the main board, the laser unit, everything, because we're not going to need these things anymore. And it also includes for the two controller ports. And not only you need to remove the main board, you need to remove everything, including all of the EO shielding. And when you have done that, the next thing that we need to do is basically make more space and removing all of the spacers over here. And we need to make a big hole for some ventilation. So basically what you need to do, you need to like completely disassemble the PlayStation 1 and even modifying the cases itself. And the reason why is because we're going to implement a lot of new parts for getting this ultimate PlayStation 1 done. So these things can be bought because they are like custom made 3D printed. What you're also going to get are like all the things that you're going to need. To begin with the controller ports, the HDMI, and then we're going to get the SD slots. Most of these things are basically like extenders because otherwise it's going to be messy if you want to put your cables in. And also comes with this special power supply that you need to replace and some extra converters. So these are like all the parts that we're going to need for this build. So the first thing that we're going to do, let's place the USB port. What I do like about this construction, it feels quite sturdy and also quite heavy. The only thing that we need to do is assemble it with the two parkers. And these are like the original parkers from the PlayStation itself. So that's what we're going to do. And let's have some fun with it as we're going with this. Here you can see even both of the joystick will be placed and get in place over here. So you don't need to be scaring that it will not align with the casing itself. What I'm noticing, there's quite some tension on this. So you need to be very careful putting this together. So let's start with the second part. I already assembled the other one over there. You can see if you tighten one of these two too tight, you're going to get crooked ports. We don't want that. So I think I will leave a little bit of room in it because basically you close these ports up when assembling the case itself. So now you can see they will have some space but they will not be crooked when you're going to assemble. Here you can see like everything is moving around and that's not good. So I will leave it in this position. What I like about this construction is that we're going to get four USB ports. So it's going to be freaking awesome. So if you want to play four player co-op or you want to play some second Dreamcast or N64, that is possible. All right, so let's take a close look at the back. The first thing that we're going to assemble is the HDMI. So I think I will need a converter if I want to use a Raspberry Pi 4 in this because if you want to make this thing an ultimate crazy PlayStation 1 emulation beast we need to have the Raspberry Pi 4 at least. I think you couldn't see it but basically there are two parts over here that are overlapping over there. So let's try to assemble this, get it in place and tighten up the parkers. Okay again be very careful. Ooh squeak squeak squeak. And let's put this thing on this position okay so the next bracket is the one for the SD card it's very convenient so you don't need to open up the casing itself every single time let's get myself the screwdriver again let's see if I can put it in the right position because this is going to be a slightly challenge okay so that is number one and let's go with number two so in this case we're done with the SD slot and that's it, like we're going to get the ribbon cable that you basically plug in your Raspberry Pi unit. Okay, so for the next part, maybe I should start with the power supply. And the reason is very simple. So with the power supply, this is what we're going to get. 
So it's going to be a slightly a little bit of messy. So we're going to get different brackets over here and everything has been connected, especially when it comes to the fan. Used a tie wrap on this. I'm not a big fan of it. Maybe in the future I can fix it, maybe with some hot glue. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. This will be the bracket for the Raspberry Pi itself. And then we're going to get here the cable that goes into the power of the Raspberry Pi. And here we're going to get the tiny support that we're going to need. It's more like this uh, conversion for the power supply to get everything on place. So the board itself, let's take a close look at that first. So this board come from retroemulation.com. So this is one of the parts you can basically find over there if you want to build yourself your own machine. So this is what we're going to get. The power supply is nothing really special. A um, couple of 3D printed parts. It's quite ingenious if you ask me. Then we're going to get here the part with the on and off switch and the LED indication. But let's put it in the case itself and let's assemble. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is put this thing over here. Or better said, turn it around, wicked. Yep. You got a brain fart, brain fart, wicked got a brain fart. Okay, so this is going to be slightly messy. If you're going to remove the fan itself, you can always like, don't have to hustle. But I just want to show you how you need to assemble it. It's easy peasy. And then we're going to put it over here on the support, the original support. We're going to need two parkers over here for getting the power supply in the right position. And we're going to tighten up these screws. But then overall, you can see like it's very easy to do. And it's very easy to assemble. It's a little bit of a cable nightmare. You can see the support over here basically holds the PCB in place. So let's tighten up this screw. Oh man, it's going to be very tight. Okay, so let's see. It's going to be in place like this. And the only thing that we need to do is having the bar go for over here for supporting this. Let's tighten up this bad boy. So everything will be in position and when we tighten up everything it will be in very good like position and nothing will happen when using it before i forget i need to put it on the here and then i need to place it so here you can see like even without a screw itself it will be in perfect position so this is the on and off switch is it on is it off you will never know Welcome to the jungle of cables, absolute. But the thing is, now we need to assemble this freaking, oh man, this freaking oh, bracket. So we need to put every single cable aside. See, that's the reason I told you like, I think I need to start with the freaking bracket, but it's more like, what do you want to do? So let's put this aside. All the cables, the cable needs to be in perfect position. Otherwise it's going to be all freaking messy all day. Okay. All right, so the button I need to do, I'm almost forgetting. So we will move the freaking parker over here because that will keep everything in place. And then we'll go in this position over here. So that's it. It's a little bit wibbly. I'm not a big fan of it. But let's put it in this position and let's get myself the pie that we're going to use. So let's talk about that first. And then we're going to have a lot of fun putting the rest of this Raspberry Pi places one together. So when you take a close look at this bracket, you can only basically install some Raspberry Pis, but there are so many options out there. So to begin with, we're going to get some orange Pis, Raspberry Pis. We're going to get the XTU4. There are so many cool machines that we can use maybe in this, or just going to use in Game Station. So there are many ways to play. The question remains, of course, which one is the best way to play? Because there are some flaws and of course some of these boards are not powerful enough to run everything. But when you're looking at the PlayStation 1 and you want to make this like the ultimate beast, I think the Raspberry Pi is one of the best choices in combination with the XU4. But when you're looking at the connections, then we're going to get some issues. I'll give you an example. So here we're going to get the Orange Pi. We're not going to have all the ports, so we shall use an extra hub for it. But is the place for it in the casing? I hardly doubt that. But even if there is a place, it's going to be a lot of messy stuff. Then we're going to get the same problem with this XU4. And yeah, not to forget, even start about this game station that I bought a very long time ago. Or this TV game box is basically just an orange pie. And of course, what I also reviewed is this Pandora Mini board. Yeah, there are four ports on this, but we cannot use it. That's the weird thing with these Pandora boxes. They basically disabled one of them. And yeah, so we need to use a hub. And when you're looking at the connections here, we're going to get a type C for connecting the power. And of course, there are solutions out there like micro USB to type C. So we can basically do stuff like that. 
yeah there are like some minor things that you need to change and that's not a big of a deal especially if you want to use a raspberry pi number four because the raspberry pi 4 has so much more to offer but let's do a quick assembly with the raspberry pi 3 because that was basically what this bracket is for and of course basically where he'll this this game case has been made for so let's do that first but i'm not afraid to say that it's going to be a mess man man it's just a mess let's put it that way like with all the cables oh man the first thing that we need to do is remove the four tiny parkers oh man there's already some wear on it maybe next time we can better remove it and <laughs> then assemble the freaking bracket but okay there are different ways to go with this so basically the mounting points are made for a raspberry pi 3 some other boards will fit on it but yeah again like a lot of modifications need to be done if you want to put a different board than a raspberry pi 3 in this okay so let's remove the sd card because we're going to use the bracket so let's get this cable nightmare away and let's get this cable nightmare away i recommend using normally like extra cooling elements i'm not going to do it this is just like for a demo for this video i just want to do a quick tutorial also like an adventure together with you and me how we're going to assemble it and oh man these kleine parks are so wore out all right so let's get the forward one in its position all right okay so let's put this one in position so the raspberry pi is now on the bracket itself yay all right so let's go on with this cable nightmare so the next thing that we need to do is put this thing over here because this is for the sd card it's still some movement over here all right in the ass getting everything in place and here you can see like the cables are way too long so there's going to be a lot of fighting with the cables getting it in the right position so after some finding with the cables we're finally managing to put all four of them in but you can see like it's going to be a very big challenge because these cables are freaking thick but when everything is in place it's going to look very nice and of course a little bit at least the hdmi cable but you need to take consideration if you're going to do an assemble with a raspberry pi 4 oh man then we're going to get a lot of trouble because we need to have a conversion kit for this uh, you're going to have like a piece of cable it's not big of a deal the power to so there is a possibility to do that but maybe in the future we'll also do that too all right so the next one that we need to assemble is the final part it's the power because if we don't have power we cannot play some games okay so next up let's plug in this bad boy and the micro usb for the power and ta-da, everything has been assembled. We're going to do it like the cheapskate way, just the easy way. Put it in there. It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to. I don't want to fold it too much. Otherwise, it's highly possible you will damage the flat cable. But I just wanted to show you how it's done or basically like very quickly. And everything has been assembled and the pie is inside. So the final thing you need to do is basically plug in the power supply and let it go. But one thing I can't let it go because when I want just have this perfect emulation beast of the machine and the only thing we can do it is with the Raspberry Pi 4. How are we going to do this? One of the ways that we're going to basically disassemble the bottom shielding and we can basically squeeze the bracket between them. We need, to, need a lot of modifications but basically what we're going to get is like this. Okay so the first thing I'm doing to remove is this tiny fan because it's like a freaking vacuum cleaner. It makes no sense whatsoever. And maybe we'll replace it with a different fan in a different time. Okay, so we need to do some modification over here because we just see what I want to do. I want to sandwich this. So I'm going to put the pie on here, but I want to stick the imbuses over there. So we can assemble everything like it should be and everything would be like sturdy in the inside. Let's remove this tiny fan first because again, this thing makes like a freaking noise, like a freaking cleaner and the wicked doesn't like that. So that's what we're going to do. So let's remove this freaking part first and let's do some modification and let's slap this pie in. And when everything has been assembled, what we need to do is plug in the HDMI cable. Then we're going to get the input for the 5 volts and the power supply, the pa -pa 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 pow And of course assemble the SD card and we're ready to go. Okay, so what we did with this casing, we cannot open the case anymore. So this has been locked. The reset is the same story, but we can still power it on. The LED goes on, but let's go and let's play some games. Okie dokie, everything has been plugged in and connected. So we're going to use the Raspberry Pi 4. Let's power it on and let's play some awesome games on my PlayStation 1. 
the Beastie Edition. Alright, so the system has been booted up and let's take a close look at the Pi. So what I love about the Pi 4 compared with the Pi 3 is that we can play so much more and makes this PlayStation absolutely a beastly machine compared with the Pi 3. Well, what I really love about this Raspberry Pi 4 upgrade is that we can play games like Sega Dreamcast, Sega Naomi, stuff that didn't really run well on the Raspberry Pi 3 can now be played over here. So let's have some fun man, let's play some games and yeah I think this is a crazy project if you think about what you need to do for putting this Raspberry 3 or 4 in it. It's absolutely crazy, man. And sometimes, I must say, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, if you have a case laying around with a broken PlayStation Portable, you'll get the parts, you slap a pie in it, and you can have a lot of fun. Okay, so let's start with PlayStation 1, of course. Makes no sense that you stick a pie in it to play PlayStation 1 game. But okay, so let's try this first. So when it comes to emulation of the PlayStation 1 part, it works perfectly on the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. So it doesn't really matter which version you would stick in this device. Ah, there it is. Woo! But of course, the graphic-wise, this looks so much better than the freaking PlayStation 1 original games. Alright, so let's, have, let's play a little bit of a Thomas Wave on this. Pretty damn awesome. Uh, and that's what you can do with the Raspberry Pi 4, of course. You can play a lot of cool games. Because we made this PlayStation an emulation beast! Yeah! Okay, so next up, let's play a little bit of Dead Alive. <laughs> so pretty demo. It's so freaking awesome to play Dreamcast games on a PlayStation 1. It's such a weird thing. And of course, not to forget, we can also play some MAME on this. I play this game so much on my Endgame's Legend Arcade Machine. It's so much fun, like a basic beat em up. Stop freaking hitting me and let me get my slapping stick. Okay guys, so this is the project, the Raspberry Pi, stick it in a PlayStation 1. I think it's a pretty cool thing, but is it like really convenient to do? Because you need to get yourself a shell or at least a PlayStation that you can basically disassemble. You need to get yourself some parts stuff that you're going to need, and of course the pie itself. I think the idea behind it is pretty damn awesome, but there are some things I didn't like. Everything is just 3D printed, and I think he did an amazing job, but you can see over here the ports are not aligned that well. So I'm like, I don't want to be nitpicky about everything, but stuff like that annoys me. The connection at the back look amazing, and it makes this thing pretty damn plug and play. I think it's pretty cool, especially when you're looking at all the parts on the inside. He did an amazing job with the 3D printing. I did like this project, it was a lot of fun to do. In the end I did spend a little bit more time because I wanted to have a Raspberry Pi 4 in it. It's going to be a lot of mumbo jumbo getting this thing in, like because the kit itself was made for Raspberry Pi 3, but if you just can live with let's say, let's say gaming from the old stuff up to PlayStation 1, yeah the Raspberry Pi 3 is just a really cool thing to do. Yeah, let me know what you think of this, what I thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell become one on the Wicked Family and I will see you in the next video.